Hey, Mike. Yeah, what's going on? Hey, have you heard of Virtual PBX? No, what is that like? Virtual peanut butter and jelly? Virtual PBX provides affordable business phone plans for entrepreneurs that need a way to connect to their customers. Never give out a personal number again. They offer business telephone numbers, called forwarding, professional greetings, and so much more. Isn't that the phone you have in your office? That's correct. I have a Virtual PBX Yalink, the T21P E2. But it is the same phone that you will see on the NBC show, The Office. So when you see Dwight and Jim slamming down the phone, I have that same exact phone. Nice. Do you have a stapler and jello? It's the most important aspect of an office, making sure you have a good telephone. Yeah. And I think you can say 15% off when you sign up, right? That's correct. If you go to virtualpbx.com forward slash podcast, again, that's forward slash podcast. You can save up to 15% and you can enjoy their new flex plans starting as low as $13 per month. Well, that sounds awesome. Yes. Are you looking to start a new business or have to have professional greetings, call forwarding, texting, voicemail, virtual receptionist? If you're looking for any of those items, don't go anyplace out at Virtual PBX. That sounds cool. I, I kind of want a sandwich right now. Mike wants a sandwich and you deserve a better IP phone solution. Visit Virtual PBX. Visit them at virtualpbx.com forward slash podcast. We would like to thank Podcorn for sponsoring this episode of Tech Time Radio. Explore sponsorship opportunities and start monetizing your podcast by signing up at podcorn.com forward slash podcasters. Let me tell you about Podcorn. Podcorn is an absolute must for any podcaster starting out. Now, when we started out Tech Time Radio, we started out in a back office with a couple of mics. We expanded to a studio, and then now, as you can see, we're on the radio and have distribution into other markets. Having the ability to have Podcorn at the start of our podcast would have been a dream come true. Guess what? With Podcorn, you now have the amazing opportunity for podcasts to receive sponsorship, such as host reads, interview segments, and topical discussions. With Podcorn, there's no middleman. Podcasters of all size can browse and choose opportunities right on their platform, set their own rates, and collaborate with brands directly without exclusivities. You never give up the rights of your podcast in Podcorn, and they're here to support you everywhere possible. Visit podcorn.com. Again, that's podcorn.com. Podcorn is a true success for those starting their podcast dreams. Coming to you from the shores of the Pacific Northwest, keeping you up to date on technology while enjoying a little whiskey on the side with leading edge topics along with special guests to navigate technology in a segmented, stylized radio program. The information that will make you go, hmm. Pull up a seat, raise a glass with our hosts as we spend the next hour talking about technology for the common person. Welcome to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum. Welcome to Tech Time Radio. I'm your host, Nathan Mum. We got Mike Roday here. We got David Brown behind the board. And welcome to our season three. Our season three. That's right. <laughs> We're season premiering. Three. We are premiering a two hour two broadcast hour. of Tech Time Radio. From here on out, we have moved. We've got poor Jamie, the uh, cook, has only been moved an hour behind us. So if you're going to come on in the second hour and want to hear cooking advice, I don't think Mike and I are going to be too good at cooking advice. Let me tell you. Well, we can give them cooking advice. They just might not want it. That's right. <laughs> so you have to Especially listen. after we've been drinking whiskey for two hours. <laughs> for two hours. That's right. We got two hours to do that. <laughs> well, you're joining us live. It is Saturday. We are in the studio from 4 to 6 p.m. here on KKNW 1150 AM. We're also broadcasting on YouTube.com forward slash Tech Time. Tech Twitch TV forward slash Tech Time. Get it right, man. Facebook.com forward slash Tech Time. And you can tweet us at uh, twitter.com <laughs> forward slash Tech Time Radio. You got I'm it? to get through all of those, uh, man. There's just so many. But we have a brand new website. So really what we'd love you to do is go take a look at www.techtimeradio.com. And you can watch streams there, information. We've done a complete redesign. We thank Christina Petrie and christinapetrie.com for helping us design uh, the website. And I was very demanding on lots of stuff to do. So the poor gal had to Not work you. Extra, t- uh, extra time. <laughs> So welcome to our two-hour show. This is the current and it, only two-hour technology tech time show. Radio and Tech Time Radio Plus. The tech, oh, that's right. We see the second hour. <laughs> the second tech hour time is plus. Plus, we're going to charge everybody nine bucks, <laughs> right? right. It's, it's actually nine bucks to watch the plus hour. All right, on our two-hour show today, we have a great 
Standard items in the first hour. So if you're worried that we've changed the first hour, no. We just went crazy on the second hour. So first hour is normal. The first hour is normal, and the second hour is the after party. Is the after party. And we're going to see what's going to be happening after we have our drinks. That's right. That's right. On today's show, we have Nick Espinoza, Chief Security Fanatic, back on the show to talk about fake cryptocurrency websites. We're going to be talking about a website- cryptocurrency companies? Well, we talked about that already before. We're going to be talking about right. exchanges that are actually set up where people will go in and put money into that. And we're going to have a whole dialogue about what happens if you are investing into a cryptocurrency exchange. Well, you're giving money to somebody else. And somebody else. It. And what happens if they disappear? So we're going to be talking about that, Nick. I'm excited to have him here. Um, we're also going to be having on our segment what we found on the web. We're going to be talking about children designed uh. apps from ages 3 to 13 for social media. This yeah. is the big hit that's going on right yeah. now. So your three-year-old, do you want your three-year-old to have an app so they can do something like TikTok, no. something like social media? We're going to be talking about three different apps that are out there right now that are trying to capitalize on this market. That's itself. right. Capitalization. That's right. Best. And then we're going to have our top stories in the first five minutes. We're going to be talking about some robotic police dogs, some NFTs, vaccination passports, and tons of great stuff. But we always have Mike's Mesmerizing Moment brought to you by Story Coffee. Mm. Are you excited? The month just starts, so you get your new bag of Story Coffee coming in the mail soon, don't you? It should be coming. That should be coming. Did you? Are you already out of Story Coffee? I, I'm, I'm, I'm out of it within the first it's so week good. or so. It's so good. It's yeah. so good. So everybody, you can get a free bag of Story Coffee. Go to storycoffee.com forward slash tech time. And if you put that code in, you get a free bag. You should absolutely do a free bag to see if you like it. If you don't like it and you want burnt coffee, then order Starbucks. But otherwise, grab it. It is fantastic. All right. Well, I'm sure we're going to have a great show today. Some subjects that will make you go, mmm. And we'll be sipping some whiskey for two hours. We are going to start with our, as always, our loaded question of the day for Mike. What? All right. What is a sure sign that someone is weird? <laughs> really? Well, that's what, that's what it is. Yeah. Uh, how about wearing a cap with a checkered red and blue shirt with a over wow. jacket? How about wow. that? Wow! Wow! <laughs> really? What do you? How, what would you say? What this categorizes as weird? This is like fashion statement. It, well, yeah, it's like the J.C. Penney shorts the other day. <laughs> it's a, what is this? This is at least 1980s. You said the other one was 70s, the, so this should that, be 80s. Well, that's kind of like that's almost tweed. Uh, okay, <laughs> I love these type of jackets, dude. These are like awesome jackets. These are like. Right. Uh, you ever watch Mad Men? Oh yeah, yeah. They had these all yeah, over. That's that. about the 50s, buddy. Oh, was it? Okay, so I'm just <laughs> or a little, the 60s. Okay. 50s, is it the 50s or the uh, 60s? A throwback. I'm a nostalgic throwback type of guy. Okay. Okay. So, all right. Whatever you have to tell all yourself. Right, all right. Well, congratulations. <laughs> all right. If you want to engage with us, we'd love to have you engage with us. Go to twitchtv.com forward slash tech time radio. You can put live chats in and we'll talk about them on the air. We got our laptops here. Surface is all up and working. Hopefully our hard drives don't go bad on those as we talked about last week. And again, if you want to engage us and ask us some questions specifically on the topics we're going to be talking about later on in the second hour, you can always reach out to 425-373-5527 or 188 188- 298-KKNW. That's 188-298-5569. All right, Mike. What? We are going to have to start off our show, but go into our first segment. What's happening in the world of technology? This is our top stories in the first five minutes. All right. Disaster girl meme of a young girl smiling as a house burns down in the background has sold her popular meme as an NFT, NFT for 180 what? Ether, which is equivalent to $600,000. It was $500,000 yesterday. That oh, was $600,000 today? today. That is wow. correct. Yeah, with the Ether price. We have a little bit of an audio to play there, and we're going to listen out. It's not often you get to become a meme, and it's even less often you have any control or get to make any money from it. But the girl in this photo, Zoe Roth, has just pocketed almost $650,000 by selling her Disaster Girl meme as an NFT. The photo was taken back in 2005 when Zoe's dad noticed that just down the road, a house was on fire. Hey look, a house is on fire. It was actually deliberately lit by the local fire department as a test burn and nobody was inside. Zoe's dad entered it into a photography competition and it got published in a magazine. Shortly after, it started being shared online with people adding funny text or cropping Zoe out and putting her in front of other photographs. 
Zoe's now 21 and in college, and the money she's made will pay for her school fees and she'll donate a bunch of it to charity. It may seem like a lot for a single moment, but it's one that's likely to last forever in meme history. All right, so yeah, her memes. Meme her memes are hot and so are NFTs. And you know what? We have a, a Tech Time Radio NFT. So That's on right. our new website, if you go to our merchandise or store deal, you can actually take a look at our NFTs that we have available for purchase on OpenSea.io. They're a picture of the front page of our script to make sure they're legit. And then Mike draws With during the show. The picture and then he shows it up at the end of the show so you they're, can get that. But let's talk about this. They're twins. They're, that's right. That's exactly. They're, <laughs> they're, they're twinding. They're, you know what? That's exactly. Our 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 NFT is just as good as Disaster Girl. So you know what? I'm expecting six hundred thousand okay. dollars. Okay. The there you All go. All right. Let's... Interesting though. So Roth's NFT was purchased by Three F Music, a Dubai-based music studio. Dubai. Dubai. Uh, based music studio with surprisingly deep pockets that has also bought several other big ticket NFTs, including overly attached girlfriend. It's, oh yeah, yeah, have you, have yeah. You that's that's the what the guy. Yep, yep. Overly attached girlfriend for four hundred, uh, four hundred thousand plus. And the New York Times has also said that the NFT column of the New York Times that they placed was also purchased. Oh man, for five hundred thousand dollars. So they have purchased three different NFT areas. When asked about why they've been so aggressive in some of this, they said that their and our management team is always in cooperation with some highly knowledgeable and expertise art advisors who believe that we must grow with technology movements that help us not to only promote our business, but also support artists of the art market. And there's only so many leopards you could drive around in Lamborghinis in Dubai, huh? So I guess so. <laughs> so that's what it is. All right. Story number two. Here we go. Straddle launch. Strata launch. Strata launch. <laughs> it's going to be an interesting article. Okay. Yeah, okay. The gargantuan, the excitement there. the gargantuan airplane finally takes flight a second time. The world's largest airplane by wingspan took to the skies once again on Thursday. On Thursday, the strata launch reached the skies for its second test flight. It's like... In how many years? Like 10 plus years. <laughs> um, two years after its first voyage into the air, Microsoft co-founder Paul Allen dreamed up the plane... What we'll say on the article, uh, be but, careful didn't, there, but I, I got to be very careful. Yeah. I have a lot of NDAs. I got to be careful. That's right. All right, dreamed no up the plane, but didn't leave it to see. Didn't live to see its first flight in 2019. So he passed away sadly before he got to see it go. The Strata Launch Carrier is powered by six engines. It has a wingspan of over 385 feet. That's bigger than a standard NFL football stadium. Yeah. Um, we're airborne, the company tweeted along with a video of the plane named Rock lifting up the runway in the Mojave Air and Space Port in California. To learn more about the thinking of Paul Allen, I suggest reading his book, The Idea Man. Oh, no. And if you've purchased The Idea Man. Was it page 345? Uh, no, 336. 336. If you visit the page 330, 336, 336, you can see that your host here was thanked personally by a Microsoft co-founder, Mr. Allen. Yeah, there you go. There you go. All right, story wow. number three. And that, was, that was a name drop, <laughs> was, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, all right, there we go. <laughs> and, and I have worked for him for five plus years. So. I right, know. In, in a recent well, article, a that's right, <laughs> you do. In a recent article posted in the New York Times, what are we going to do with COVID-19 vaccine passports, passes, and even apps around the globe? Oh, no. For a variety of digital and old-fashioned approaches are being used to concern to confirm the vaccination for entry of public places. You got yours? Yeah, there's, yeah. My, there's so, my card. It's, it's, your, it's your white it's, card. It's the latest status symbol. Flash it to people and you get access into concerts, sports arena, and long forbidden restaurant tables unless you're in that? the in city of Snohomish. Thank you, David. And then you still have to tell them that you're vaccinated to have your twenty one your your son's twenty one first birthday party last night, which you were a part of, and they still didn't want to let us do that. All right, the new platinum card of the COVID age is the vaccine certificate. But what about going digital, like your Apple Pass credit card or a QR code scanner? Today in our two-hour show, we're going to be divided and we're going to be talking specifically about should technology replace the easy recognizable yellow card that is needed with your passport to say that you have certain vaccination shots. Mm. into a digital solution, and would it be even better to have Yellow a card, digital huh? passport? A yeah, if you travel overseas, have to pee on it. so if you, have, if you travel overseas, and I've done that, you have to have a uh, yellow card that goes with your passport. So when you go to check in, you put your passport out there, you put your yellow vaccination chart to make sure that it's taken care of, just signed by somebody. So you could have anybody essentially yeah, sign like it. Your old, your old 
school yeah, so vaccination So part. what if we decide to replace it? So we got a long segment that we're going to talk about that, lots of different opinions. We're going to go through each of the countries that have released an application out on a mobile device and see what we think about it. All right. And last story, story number four, New York Police Department terminates robot police dog contract with the Boston Dynamics following criticism over an overly aggressive policing <laughs> tactics that the new, so how can so the robot is over aggressively yeah, have so, you seen it yeah. it looks it looks really intimidating so it was yellow it was it, yellow and it was yellow it was yellow it was bright yellow it had so, its vaccinations <laughs> it had its vaccinations yeah, there you go so um essentially they ended the ninety four thousand dollar a year contract which seems pretty inexpensive now this dog has essentially been able to go on in and he was equipped with cameras lights sensors. And was used with artificial intelligence to even help navigate complex environments in October, delivering food to hostages that were being secluded for um, some hostage ransom. So they decided to get rid of the police dog. How are we going to go to Terminator 2 type of times if we get rid of all this stuff and go back to the standard? We're not, we're not ready yet. We're not ready for T2 stuff? No. It looked like a T2 dog, I, too. I think that's probably the primary drivers that we're, we're not quite ready for this yet. We're just a little scared as out of this. All right. Well, you know what? To see all of our factual information, you can go to techtimeradio.com and look underneath our new blog section on Monday at 11 a.m. There will be all of our stories with details that you're not able to get here due to time constraints. So up next, we have our interview with Nick Espinoza on security and criminal scam acts in a segment we call Technology Insider. Mike will be bringing uh, us his NFT during the commercial break, and we will be sipping some whiskey on the side with our pick of the day. We'll see right after the other side of this commercial break. Thank you. Did you know that up to 12 to 15 percent of Americans grind their teeth at night while they sleep? Hmm. Yeah, it's it's called bruxism. I used to work at a sleep lab, and we used to we used to measure that, and it leads to a lot of uh, problems like headaches and destroys your teeth. It wears down the enamel, and it's just very hard on your your mouth. So every once in a while, I'll wake up, my jaw will hurt. Do you think I'm grinding my teeth at night? Yep. Well, so how do you go about protecting this then? Uh, the number one recommended way of protecting yourself from teeth grinding is what's called a night guard, which is a custom fitted prosthetic that you put inside your mouth. It usually runs, you know, hundreds of dollars, but I know our sponsor, Smile Brilliant, can get you custom fitted night guards for as little as $45 a piece. So if you go to smilebrilliant.com and use Tech Time radio at checkout you can receive 20 percent off your complete order so visit smilebrilliant.com and use the tech time radio at checkout code hey mike yeah what's going on have you heard about 180 consulting no i love these guys you know how much i avoid working with copy of vendors right uh, actually i get to hear about it all the time not anymore because guess what the guys at 180 consulting took over the entire process they assessed our needs work directly with the vendors on my behalf and helped us understand our option. No sales fluff, just good information so we can make the right decision. Well, that sounds good. How do they get paid? Their only compensation comes from a small share of the cost savings they create. They work for us and it's a win-win. You know, that sounds like a no-brainer. There's two ways to reach them. You can get them at info at 180-consulting.com or visit them online at www.180-consulting.com. www.180-consulting.com. Thank you, Mike. 180-consulting.com. Hi, I'm Bernadette Pager, host of An Informed Life Radio. In an age when the term misinformation is used to silence criticism and debate about COVID-19, vaccines, and more, we're bringing you doctors, lawyers, and scientists to discuss the missing information about your health and medical freedom. An Informed Life Radio airs right here on KKNW every Friday from 3 to 5 p.m. We're starting a real health revolution, one conversation at a time. Join us. We would like to thank Podcorn for sponsoring this episode of Tech Time Radio. Explore sponsorship opportunities and start monetizing your podcast by signing up at podcorn.com forward slash podcasters. Let me tell you about Podcorn. Podcorn is an absolute must for any podcaster starting out. Now, when we started out Tech Time Radio, we started out in a back office with a couple of mics. We expanded to a studio. And then now, as you can see, we're on the radio and have distribution into other markets. Having the ability to have Podcorn at the start of our podcast would have been a dream come true. Guess what? With Podcorn, 
you now have the amazing opportunity for podcasts to receive sponsorship, such as host reads, interview segments, and topical discussions. With Podcorn, there's no middleman. Podcasters of all size can browse and choose opportunities right on their platform, set their own rates, and collaborate with brands directly without exclusivities. You never give up the rights of your podcast in Podcorn, and they're here to support you everywhere possible. Visit podcorn.com. Again, that's podcorn.com. Podcorn is a true success for those starting their podcast dreams. Welcome back to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum. If you want to join us with your opinion on COVID-19 vaccination digital passports, we're going to ask you to join us in our second hour. You can call us on the phone at 425-373-5527 or 1-88-298-KKNW. Or you can even ask us a question on Twitter at hashtag Tech Time Radio. Mike, during the break, we got to sample our whiskey. And our pick of the day during the show is the Evan Williams Single Barrel 2013 86.6 Proof bottle 86.6 that's proof. what it says yes nice. because it's 43.3 percent alcohol by volume 43. O- only only a, only the english in america would decide to take the alcohol by volume and decide to come up with their own proofing system so uh, yes but he, well, it has, <laughs> what it has you bagging on uh, i'm just saying that we have inches over centimeters we just thought everything <laughs> was uniquely different um so it's a 86 proof it's about 33 dollars mm-hmm. a bottle and it has Considered to be the up-and-coming, well-rounded palate for a great body with rich caramel uh, aromas. What do you think? It's very tasty. It's pretty tasty, isn't it? Mm-hmm. We're going to have to it's make sure. It's got a little bit of a bite. It does first, at first, right? It kind of hits really you, smooth, but then it doesn't It doesn't linger a little bit either. So no, that, that's great. All right. Well, bite. we're really excited to be inviting our guest, Nick Espinosa, back to the show. We're excited to have him as a part of our uh, season three kickoff with our two-hour show. So we are going to start our next segment with him. Welcome to Technology Insider. We get the information directly from the source. All right. We're bringing Nick up on the camera. Nick, hopefully everything is. is going Hi, Nick. well today. How are you doing, Nick? I'm officially going to bid on your NFT. You're going to... Uh, oh, you're um, gonna, okay. Yeah. Oh, there you go. My starting bid is... Yeah, I'm going to bid a million dollars, and I hope you take third-party out-of-state bad crypto. A bad crypto. That's, that's what we're talking about. The only way I pay. <laughs> that's that's what we're going to talk about right now. That's right. It? That is absolutely that's right great. On. Hey, thank you very much for joining us, our show. We're excited to have Anytime. you on. This is our big two-hour launch, and, and I couldn't be more excited to have you as a part of our regular show that goes in the syndication the first hour and then our second hour. We'll have to get you back there because that will be a little bit more drunk. I mean, it will be a little bit what? more drink. We'll be a little bit more drink savvy at that we time. We will be a little bit more relaxed. More relaxed. There that's that's a better That's well, a better word. There you go. And then we can talk about lots well, of stuff. What do you got going, going on there? there? What do you have, Nick? Do you have something to drink there? Yeah. So so my, my go-to is typically Lagavulin. Okay. Uh, although uh, I, I'm at, in the moment, I'm, I'm drinking Johnny Walker at the moment. Okay. So. A little Johnny Walker is good. Black label. Stuff. Yeah. You doing the black label? Blue. Oh, the uh, blue label. All right. Okay. okay. Oh, he's, yeah. He's a yeah. little bit more. Having to have some around, so matches my shirt. All good. All good. All right. There you go. You and Mike could almost be brothers. You guys got, well, you got a purple shirt. I got a purple shirt. Okay. On, that's man. right. You got a blue shirt on last week. All yes, right. I did. I, I know because I had to re edit some stuff on the I, video. And so I didn't I, wear shorts. Oh, you didn't wear shorts. Oh, wow. <laughs> all right. So the CEO of Theodex cryptocurrency exchange in Turkey exited. Fleeing the country with two billion worth of customer assets. Let's talk about it. Istanbul police say that uh, Farouk Azur, 27, the exchange founder and CEO, left the country on Tuesday, flying to Albany, capital of Turinia. The Associate Press reported, saying that uh, the CEO has disappeared with up to two billion dollars in assets. But in response to allegations that he's fled the country or stolen any funds. Ozir says that he's been a victim of a smear campaign and vows to clear his name after securing additional financing. Well, that's great. Okay, He's going to get more money so, so he can clear his name? Here's what's known. The exchange appeared to have experienced some problems on Monday, but largely operated normally until the start of Tuesday with the cryptocurrency exchange tracking site CoinMarketCap, who reported that the exchange had been trading more than $585 million in cryptocurrency. So big active cryptocurrency mm-hmm. uh, site. Um, but later that day, users were unable uh, via social media to withdraw any of their funds. No. Oh, CoinMark Cap spokesman tells Coindesk that the exchange stopped providing trading data around 1 p.m. on Tuesday. The state-run Turkish press agency 
said that they have criminal investigations regarding um, the board known as MASK has launched a investigation into Azir, and on Tuesday, authorities froze the exchange bank accounts. Uh Uh-oh. The agency says the Office of Istanbul Prosecutors has appeared for victims to come forward. This has happened before, though. Of course, we've had this happen um, with uh, other um, cryptocurrency exchanges, specifically Mt. Gox, is, I think, is there Gox or Gox or Gox. Gox, Gox essentially had the same exact issue happen to them, but they were able to essentially find some cryptocurrency that were in cold storage, and they were able to almost give all the uh, because the cryptocurrency went up in value, get all of the investors' money back. Oh, they had their original. So they cleared their name. So they so they were taken care of. But we got a cryptocurrency that people were actively selling and trading in that has essentially disappeared overnight. So, Nick, let's talk about this, all right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So so people do this all the time, right? People get an email or they see something on YouTube, and all of a sudden there's a commercial, and they say, okay, I'm going to start investing into cryptocurrency. I'm going to invest into a place. that I, I, I have two cryptocurrency companies that I use. I use KU Coin which is a Japanese uh, company, just because I can buy the really small and cryptocurrency. And then I got Coinbase. But anything that I'm really, really doing, I'm essentially saving it on KU Coin to a ledger device, which is a hardware device of cryptocurrency. Which is a real physical... Real physical device. We talked about it on the show. Electronic wallet. Electronic wallet. And then I transfer it to Coinbase to make sure that everything kind of stays, because Coinbase... Seems to be the most legit site so the, that is the available out there, there. Seems to be, yeah. Well, yeah. there's a major still, player. It's a major Definitely. player. So tell me, Nick, how does this happen, and and why are people falling for this all the time? This is the second or third time that this mm-hmm. happened in the last three months. Right. Well, I think it's first things first. I think it's important to differentiate um, basically the theft of cryptocurrency with an actual fraudulent or fake cryptocurrency exchange. And we've seen these happen from around the world, these fake exchanges that get created. So South Korea has had a rash of these things. They had one called BitKRX. I think it was back in 2017 that essentially was a fake uh, cryptocurrency and people were investing and they basically ripped them off. They had another one called Comid that was K-O-M-I-D. You know, also uh, a while back that that was happening as well there have been ones out of the netherlands and in in britain as well six people were actually arrested by fake uh creating a fake cryptocurrency online they got something like four thousand victims and millions like tens of millions of actual dollars in cryptocurrency that they were able to uh use and basically started uh actually getting into their users accounts and stealing information including crypto uh cryptocurrency itself and mind you these are the ones that we know about uh, you know, not to mention the theft that we see on a regular basis of somebody just getting their wallet stolen, uh, you know, broken into and stolen. So it's a huge, huge problem that we have right now with this. And it's in part because trust, I think, is a really, really powerful thing that we simply just lack when it comes when it comes to common sense in technology and cryptocurrency. If you think about it this way, all the currencies, I don't care if it's the US dollar or Bitcoin or anything in between, they are all basically have a dependency on trust in the people that are using this. So basically, if you have to trust, for example, the US government, uh, that they're essentially going to back and ensure the currency Mm -hmm. that we use here in the United States. And to that end, they regulate the currency against fraud and counterfeiting and theft and all of that. So if your bank, like I, you know, I walk into your bank and I rob, let's say your account, you're FDIC insured. And that's something that cryptocurrency doesn't have. They thwart counterfeiting by virtue of blockchain blockchain technology, but that's not perfect either. In fact, the Cloud Security Alliance released a report of about 200 different types of attacks or threats that blockchains have, such as rollback attacks, types of denial of service attacks that might separate you from your trading or your currency and more. And in terms of regulation, there is no regulation whatsoever in cryptocurrency, which attracts some investors, but also pushes away others when they start researching about this. So things like pump and dump schemes, for example, are rampant. You know, for example, recently, I know, Nathan, your best friend is John McAfee. He was recently (laughs) caught in charge with a pump and dump scheme on cryptocurrencies. You know, and the vast majority of these things go under the radar and they even advertise online. You can go Google pump and dump schemes and there are there are organizations out there that you can belong to that will you'll help inflate the currency and then sell it at the top end and leave everybody else holding the bag. These are things like in the US. U.S. stock market and stock markets around the world that are regulated and with no backing, uh, you know, of a state for things like this, 
theft is rampant in this with with no kind of FDIC insurance anywhere on the planet. So even like Coinbase, right? Very reputable, sure. Very reputable site. Really, we're we're, we're relying mm-hmm. upon them mm-hmm. to maintain their business, their business practices, and they don't allow every cryptocurrency to be traded because they want to do some regulations to specifically make sure that. These they're, are, they're are trying more to self-regulate. Right. Yeah, they're trying to self, self right. That's self-regulation, though. No government has Correct. put a gun to their head and said you have to do this. And if I steal, if I if I'm able to get access to your your Coinbase account, whatever you've got in there, uh, assuming it's not in cold storage, it's actually in the account. I can just steal it. And too bad, sucks to be you, but I now have your 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 cryptocurrency, and you're not getting that back. And, and Coinbase I has that. I I had to deal with an account on my on my work area where an account got broken into. Somebody had remote access into a computer and essentially went into their Coinbase account and put immediately a transfer to another Bitcoin address, another Litecoin address, another mm-hmm. address, and essentially transferred the money out once the individual found out about it and was uh, excited and, and contacted Coinbase. And they said, well, we're really sorry about that. You need to keep that yeah. secure because that's really on your own and, and out hundreds of thousands of dollars right. this individual was. So, okay, so, yeah. now, so we got that. So now let's talk about cryptocurrency exchange website so that's a little bit different that's what happened to this to our, our buddy here is where he was running a whole site that was essentially selling and buying and trading and allowing people to pour money into it and then he was paying them out so let's explain about them because those are kind of now the new trendy fake items just like cryptocurrency can be fake but there's a lot of these popping up all over everywhere too yeah i mean and that's and that's we're, we're seeing a lot of that right now i mean if you're looking at a, a, a you know the one out of turkey thodex uh, you know, basically, it really underscores the power of social media here because the Turkish authorities had no idea this was going on until basically citizens of Turkey started exploding on Twitter saying, hey, I can't get into this. I think this is a scam. You know, but we are seeing a lot of these fly by night operations that essentially spin up. And what they'll end up doing is offering you just, you know, either guarantees that a cryptocurrency can't have a guarantee on like, yes, we guarantee return on your investment or yes, you know, we will we will ensure your cryptocurrency that, you know, you won't lose money on your investment kind right. of thing. It's all fake. I mean, that is, you, there's none of that in actual cryptocurrency, uh, you know, and, and when we are looking at this, when we have something that's hot in the news, uh, you know, we see a, a absolute explosion of cyber criminals start to use that. A parallel example would be at the beginning of COVID. And I think we talked about that probably on a previous show, but at one point, 5,000 domains a day, 5,000 websites a day were being registered for COVID-19 and coronavirus. And basically these were fake sites on where you could attempt to buy toilet paper or PPE or, Mm -hmm. you know, actually claim that stimulus check that you never got, you know, these kinds of things. This translates directly to the latest trend. And as as we've seen an explosion in the price of Bitcoin, now Ethereum, I think, has been blowing up and some of the others, we're going to continue to see this. You're going to continue to see these advertisements, uh, you know, on the major spaces saying, come join my thing because, you know, come join my website, my trading platform, because, you know, we'll guarantee that your investment will keep going up. And if you recall, when when Bitcoin hit almost 20,000 a few years ago, people were mortgaging their homes on this. Yeah. You know, banking like, oh, my God, this is going up. And now people are saying Bitcoin due to instability in the world is going to reach 150,000 U.S. per coin. I mean, it's absolutely nuts. So so we're seeing a huge rush of investors at least dipping their toes into this situation, which is just ripe for every scam on the planet because there's no regulation. Right. So if you go to the Thodex website right now and you have to translate it. Uh, into English. There's an English translator mm-hmm. from Google, thank goodness. It essentially says that we have been victimized uh, as, well as a team of people and experts with the social media is not necessarily to be picking on us. And the volume of Thodex and all the trade volume of cryptocurrency will uh, be at a returned level at a later time. We have made accounts payable to 3,000 users, have been cleared. If I was to steal the money, I would have just taken the money and not left my current accounts open and that is all the information is that, that you is have that, right is here. Is that Aziz? Well, yeah, that's that, that's well, that printed from their website as of this right. morning. Well, what make what makes it weird though is the timeline of this, because users were starting to complain. Yep. That, you know, basically, Masak, the M A S A M A S A K, which is the the investigate like the fraud investigation for financial crime in Turkey, was basically getting wind of this and starting to look into this. He goes 
and flies to Albania. Yep. Everybody is down like, you know, a total combined something like $2 billion. And then an investigation starts um, the day after the assets are frozen by this. So I don't know how they are able to pay out unless it's through that authority. Not to mention the fact that you're talking about non-Turkish citizens that could go there. You, for example, Nathan, just said you've got basically an exchange in Japan that you use. Yep. And, Kingsley. you know, yep. it didn't take you sending in a passport to do that, did nope. it? No, no, just, you know, it, right. It, 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 just, it, it, I didn't even have to put right. my name or uh, anything with it. So it's, it's very, all, right. it's all yeah. about the system. Yeah. So I just right. put some Bitcoin so, in and boom, they took it from me. And I, I, I've been able to trade on there for a couple of years. There, now. You there go. it is. Right. And you, 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 you put trust and faith in the choice you made for using them. And I'm not saying you made a bad choice or anything like that, but that's essentially what we're talking about here. The users are looking at Thodex and maybe it's, you know, mostly Turkish citizens, but there's no reason why somebody from a neighboring country or the United States, American citizens that have, you know, family back in the home country, uh, you know, are using them. You know, so so this is the problem that we have as well, because there's no regulation nationally or internationally on this. It's going to be very interesting to see who gets resolved in this, assuming that there is something to resolve. Like in the case of Mount Gox, they basically went under. And if I'm recalling correctly, because I think that was back in like 2016 or something like 2017, that. 2017, yep, 17. Yeah, they actually had a massive thing theft yep we're talking like tens of millions of dollars worth hackers of, came know, on like, in and stole a right, bunch of stuff just, from them. just yep. blew them out and by virtue of that if you had an account on, on mount, mount gox there was nothing you could do i mean you there was no recourse there was no fdic insurance you know or anything like that anywhere on the planet and so you know here we are yeah they wait almost two years to get your money back and only because well, the cryptocurrency went up in value, in value and right. they cashed it out invest. were they able to find some well, at least they you know they they well, the, no, no, so, well, no, the, no. Well, no, the company didn't, but they actually they had people come on in investigating right. with that, and they found some cold storage Bitcoin, and they decided to okay. use that to, to do it. So, yes, yeah, luckily it, people yeah. got most of their money back, but that was all circumstances that right. were lucky in that event to actually get the money back. Right, and you can seamlessly convert your currency. You know, and if I went if I went with a hundred thousand dollars in U.S. cash, and I went into any bank and said, "Give me the equivalent in euros." That gets there's a ledger somewhere that a government knows that yep. I just did that. Yep. Whereas with this, I mean, I can say, give me ten million dollars of Bitcoin and trade it in for Ethereum, Dogecoin. You know, take your pick, right? And and essentially, the only thing that's there is the blockchain. Yep. Mm. You know, so I mean, and that's actually one of the big problems we have in cybersecurity is because these currencies are unregulated. It's basically really enabled people like ransomware attackers uh, to use cryptocurrency because they're very hard to track. They're very hard to trace, not to mention the drug lords, weapon traffickers and international terrorists all use cryptocurrency to move money now because it's just so hard to track. On, on a global scale and you can move that money and convert it and everywhere it's it's a real scourge in the cybersecurity community attempting to track these people and when they're ans asking for ransoms in the millions when they're hitting corporations you know it's just it's a difficult thing all the, all the way around it's a headache for for law enforcement globally so if you're giving advice to a listener listening to the show right so some people are I'm absolutely at the entry level. Should I do cryptocurrency? Should I not do? I, I get this asked all the time, right on the street. Dude, can I, should I do cryptocurrency? Oh, I get it on Facebook all the time. Should I not do cryptocurrency? Is it to be trusted? Is it not to be trusted? We talked about it where it's, it's, it's as reliable as monopoly money and it's about the same value. But intrinsically, people have a value for cryptocurrency, so it's worth some money. What, do, what If your grandma, your mom asks you that she wants to invest $100,000 in a cryptocurrency, what would you tell them? Um, if my mother wanted to do that, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, I mean, like, I, where I, have you been with all that money? <laughs> yeah. no. I'm like my, my inheritance really? No. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I, uh, I would probably for, for an investor that let's say, uh, you know, is, is older and, you know, sees these rates of exchange, I think, uh, you know, or rather the increase in what Bitcoin is doing, uh, you know, I would be cautious about it only in the sense that the last thing you want to do financially, and it's just good advice, I don't care what you're doing, is putting all of your eggs in one basket. Absolutely. You know, feel free to dip your toes in, feel free to, you know, to, to invest what you want, but make sure that you're using a large and reputable site. And, you know, by virtue of that, I mean, there are some tips I can give you on how to, like, basically spot a fake site 
you know, if you want, I mean, it's, it's, you know, I think there are things that are indicators that, that a lot of people take for granted, or they see that big shiny, you know, basically your $10,000 will be $150,000, you know, in a year and a half because of, you know, the amazing power, you know, of, of, of Bitcoin or whatever it is. But I mean, I think the first thing that I would say is just do your research. You know, if you get an advertisement for this, or you're looking at a website, Google it. I mean, people are more than happy to dish online legitimately about the good, the bad, and the ugly of whatever yep. they're using. And I mean, I think that's your very first stop and everybody has access to Google per, you know, Google loves that. Yep. You know, but the second thing is, is if an exchange that you're looking at promises a rate of return on an investment that really seems too good to be true, yeah, get rid of it, it probably is, yeah. right? I mean, this is speculative currency. And so there's no guarantees with this. Also, don't succumb to pressure to deposit funds. Legitimate exchanges usually don't deploy tactics like that to solicit clients. So I think that's an important one to really understand. If they are saying you have to invest in order to work on this platform, that is yeah. something I think that would throw up a red flag in the cryptocurrency world. Also, if the communication that you're getting from this place looks like spam, if they're asking like you know persistently for things like recharging of wallets, that is a red flag to me as well. Because again, most of them like Coinbase is just gonna leave you alone. That's right. You know, they're just you're just up to your own devices. Also, unsolicited offers or calls with advice on investing or buying cryptocurrencies and stuff like that. Even if they say they're from financial advisors or brokers, there's no reason why you can't look these people up, um, you know, or if they, they're coming or originating from things like unregulated cryptocurrency exchanges, you know, basically trust your gut on that. You know, platforms that ask for, you know, high registration or withdrawal fees obviously is another huge one as well. Would you use a checking account that every time, let's say you, you had to go into overdraft because you forgot to move money, they're going to hit you up for $200 fee? Hell no, nobody no, would use that. Absolutely You not. know what I mean? You know, or also- Use Coinbase, that's my s solution. Right. Use well, Coinbase, I mean, they're legit, they've been there. If you're going to be playing with this stuff, be sure. careful, use Coinbase. Sure, but I, but I think it's important to understand though too that a lot of sites are going to look and feel like Coinbase yeah might actually say Coinbase, but they're actually malicious as well. So it's important to understand, I think, these tip tips and tactics, uh, tactics. Trust your gut. You know, Make sure that, that you are doing your homework, that you are doing your research. If it feels like a scam, it's a, it's scam. a scam. I mean, the, Cash the, you know, under the third law. Yes, <laughs> Cash under the mattress. There you go. That's right. Yes, all right. Right well, next to the shotgun. All right, Nick, we are almost out of time. We are actually out of time. We're, We're about five time. minutes out of time. But that's all right. We got oh, another two you. hours, though. So that's good. We got we got two hours. We got plenty more to cover. Right on. All right. Thank you very much for joining us. Absolutely. You. If you guys are thinking about being a part of cryptocurrency, go to Coinbase or go to some place like Nick Legitimate says here. Price. Do your research. Do your research. Do your research. Go do your Googling and find out information before you put any money into anything. And if you really want to take a risk, just put it in the American stock market. And then you can just have your risks that way too, right? That's it. At least some regulated processes in that. Coffee cans in the backyard. Oh, okay, there you go. All right. <laughs> Nick, land, thank land you very up. much for joining us. We'll talk to you again, I'm sure, on Tech Time Radio. Yeah, bye, Nick. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. All right. When we come on back, we're going to be talking about kids' apps that have been around forever. On what we found on the web, we still have Mike's mesmerizing moment, and we are excited to be extending it into our second hour. So we'll see you after this commercial break. Warning, this podcast is inappropriate, dumb, and should not be listened to. Oral discretion is advised. Fat Tango presents a monthly scripted comedy show. Each episode is a self-contained short story that showcases the sick, twisted senses of humor of its creators. Episodes range from podcast parodies to supernatural encounters and cartoonish ridiculousness. I do this in the name of science! Jeff, which kid took the gummy bears? Can you name a famous trombone player? How do you know my I'm Santa that was the best I've uh, ever seen! Thanks, bro. Every episode is a different story with different people, played by different actors, sometimes. I know I've told you this before, but I don't like you. Is this because we didn't want to get a dog? How? We got a dog! Wham! Let's get a dog! Toledo! You're disrespecting painting, you can Can you believe he said that? No, man. Can't change my mind on this. I wish for a bigger Boy, if I was listening to this on some other podcast that was running a trailer for it, I would sure go listen to it. You know what? Split-second decision. All of it's real. Yes, I would murder Santa Claus. Check us out wherever you listen to podcasts.
New episodes release first Monday of every month. Fat Tangle is also launching its podcast network this month. So go check it out on their website at fattangleproductions.com and follow them on social media at Fat Tangle Podcast on Twitter and at Fat Tangle Productions on Instagram. Look forward to seeing you there. Hey, Mike. Yeah, what's going on? Hey, we got a new sponsor here, and they're called The Art of Manliness. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Have you heard of them? I've heard of these folks. Yeah, I've I've been on their website several times. You've been on their website? Yeah, they talk about everything, man. You know, like how to wear a porch coat with jeans or how to give yourself a buzz cut or uh, style tips for men. Really? Well, guess yeah. what? I have what? not heard of them until now, and now I'm excited because you know what? You're not uh, a man. Well, I am a man. <laughs> <laughs> You're not a manly man. All right. So this is really the show for manly men. Are you sick and tired of waiting through two hours of fluff in order to get a few good takeaways? Have you listened to podcasts that make you just go, huh? Tune into the Art of Manliness podcast, where you can gleam and distill the very best insights from the world's experts in self-improvement, philosophy, and practical skills, history, and a lot more. And do it all under an hour. Without all the eye-rolling filler, you can walk away from every episode, Art of Manliness podcast, with actionable insights you can start implementing today to improve your life. You can listen to them on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or any of your other podcast players. Welcome back to Tech Time Radio. How's the whiskey tasting, Mike? Uh a little different this time. It was a little bit. Now it's, it's got a little bit, bit more, of air. A little bit more bite since it's been hanging out. It is a little bit. I had a little bit bite. It kind of burned a little bit, but yeah, I don't know. I still like it, though. Okay, I, that's good. Well, okay, we'll see what we get at. All right, yeah, we're going right. to navigate into the fad of technology right now as yeah. we move into our next segment. Okay. What we found on the web. What we found on that's the right. web. That's right. David's been all over that tonight. He's, I haven't said any of the words, and he's done it. We've been working on that. We haven't job. heard I am a cat. I know. Well, cat. We, got second, we got second hour. We can still hear that, yeah. too. All right. Okay. So, kid apps have been around for years. Putt Putt by Humongous Entertainment, no. based in Bothell, Washington, the most prominent series. Oh, really? I, I, so I, I did didn't know that. I, I lived there. Did I. I did not. <laughs> but you like, Putt Putt joins the parade? Created in 1992. That's no old kidding. because that, my, that's old school. Yeah, that's my, my that's kids back when it. we were playing on bulletin boards and stuff. Yeah, I know, I know. That's like right at the geez. beginning. Yeah, that's right at the beginning of yeah, <laughs> yeah. Fifty baud modems. Freddy Fish, Pajama Sam, and others. They sold over fifteen million copies. So kids' market is a market that grows well. If you take a look at V Tech Company, mm-hmm. uh, I, Shark my Tank kids had V Tech stuff. Shark Tank, uh, Mister Wonderful was a big investor and in, owner in V Tech Corporation. Kids. Uh, electronics for, for a young age, and you can also take a look at the t- 1.2 million apps on phones for kids to play with each and every day. And now, the ones that turn into gambling sites s- for adults. They do. <laughs> if you have a VPN on that, and you're in a different country, there you can go. absolutely get that. Are social media apps truly safe for kids? A young boy leans back in a rocking chair on the balcony. He had just bought some rocks from Home Depot. He painted them and said, "Let me show you what they look like over here." He points to his collection. There's a blue rock, an orange rock. And one with stars and a flower. A few seconds later, the video carousel switched to another clip. This time, it's a girl named Avery who pops a few quarters into her gumball machine and tells her subscribers 97 times it took to get a blue. Yeah. It's not for the tiny voices and faces you <clears throat> may think of falling down TikTok's rabbit hole, but in the world, there's a brand new application called Zigazoo, the social media app for kids ages three. 212. Yeah, this one's getting a lot of praise. It is. It's a short form video platform launched last summer in 2020. It's a 30 second video challenges that were created by zoos, museums, teachers, musicians, and TV studios to encourage kids to answer questions and to video record themselves. It now has over 120,000 subscribers. And it, it has everything from singing, dancing, and pet show alls. Yeah. Now, the app requires adults over age 18 to sign up for Facebook and Google or an Apple account. Parents will then decide what access they have. Now, this is a hybrid app, just like Disney's Club Penguin. Yay. Okay, this app has been around. It's a family-friendly app that, that Disney uh, has provided that has different islands filled with games and chat rooms to interact with their friends. The social media app for kids features parental controls and time limits that allow them for safe chat modes. Yeah. Now, if you don't want a Disney alternative or you don't want the new Instagram slash Facebook alternative, you can also use Pop Jam. Pop Jam is a creative social media app where kids under 13 can post content, stickers, create their own drawings, and share them all through the Instagram for kids process. 
The app's moderators limit the posts, though, to 6 a.m. to 11 p.m., so after 11 o'clock. Oh, your really? Kid, your kid that's under 13 should be asleep, I guess. So that's from great parenting. 12, 12 uh, to uh, 5. 5 a.m., they can't they post can't anything. Doing that's anything. right. Would you allow your kid on a social media app? Uh, you know, this. I, I kind of fall into the no camp. This, this, camp. To me, this is like the virtual... Uh, platform of of selling cigarettes to kids because social media is is really designed the way it is yeah and it and it has created a lot of addictive qualities that we weren't ready for and depression and stuff like that all right so. we're going to talk about this on our second hour so we're oh, going to come on okay. back and talk about well, this would you allow that if you have an opinion you can get on the phone right now at 425-373-5527 you have two opinions you got passport wallets, and you got, would you allow your kids social media apps? And at this time, we're going to move, of course, into our most segmented and prosperous segment, Mike Smith's Rising Moments. Our, our most awesome one. <laughs> Hello, my name is Arthur, and my life's work is connecting people with coffee. Story Coffee is a small batch specialty coffee company that uses technology to connect people to each product resource, which allows farmers to unlock their economic freedom. Try our medium roast founder series coffee, which is an exotic bourbon variety that is smooth, fresh, and elegant at storycoffee.com. That's S-T-O-R-I coffee.com. Today, you can get your first bag free when you subscribe at storycoffee.com with code TECHTIME. That's S-T-O-R-I coffee.com. Hi, this is Lisa Downs, host of Reigniting You, a new show here on KKNW that explores a variety of topics and timely issues for making mid to late career transitions. I'll be here every Wednesday afternoon at 3 o'clock bringing you guest interviews, career transition advice, and great stories to guide you to what's next in your career and life. Gain a renewed sense of purpose for your next phase with a positive, forward-looking approach. Get ready to be re-energized, recharged, and reignited Wednesdays at 3 o'clock. Hello, Seattle. How would you like to have immediate and easy access to your live EKG and heart rate data? Your data right at your fingertips and with no need to hook up wires and leads or be strapped to a machine at the doctor's office. The new Pulse device from Vivomi continuously tracks your EKG and displays this data on your mobile phone. Have you ever wondered how your EKG and heart rate behaves when you're exercising at the gym, navigating the stressful demands of the workday, or just getting the kids ready for school or relaxing at home? The Pulse is a different kind of wearable, and you can experience this difference by going to www.vivomi.com and ordering your device today. This is Mike's Mesmerizing Moment, presented by Story Coffee. Visit storycoffee.com. Woo! All right. Yeah, so um, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the the what we were talking about with Nick a few minutes ago. Okay, about You know, there's a few reasons why we're we're doing these things, you know. One is we're trying to get our needs met. And one of the primary reasons we ways we try to get our needs met is through money. Yep. The other one is that from a human behavior standpoint, we want to trust other people. We want to trust them. It doesn't mean we do and it's not as naive we we tend to think that's a very naive thing, but uh, we want to trust p- people to do what they're going to tell us to do okay? because it's a social glue thing. Okay. So it's easy for me to say, hey, trust me, wink, wink, and you automatically want to do that. Yeah, there's all this stuff on YouTube all over everywhere. Everybody is trying to get new cryptocurrency companies popping up left and right to invest yeah. in, and then also and cryptocurrency exchanges. It's just like the new and spam this bot. Is, this is one of those, this is like a quick, 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 rich Quick get rich scheme thing. Yep. So we want we all want to to get those needs met as quickly as we can, and we have a little design me- mechanics in our brain that wants us to do that. What's that so, called? Well, it's our survival mechanism. Our survival mechanism. Yes, yeah, heuristic thinking and all kinds of different things that are going on there. This, this it's, it's more complicated than it seems, but but two of the things is is that we want to trust these people and we want to get this result. All right. That was Mike's mesmerizing moment. Now, always, it's a great time to go to Story Coffee. Use code Tech Time and get your free bag of coffee. Yeah, Story Coffee, our, yum. Our Story Coffee presenting our great segment here. So, Mike, we've gotten through almost our first hour. Isn't that exciting? 
We do that every week. I know. And, and you so, know, it's, it's so, <laughs> so I'm not sure why it's exciting. Because our second hour is going to be filled with a whole bunch of creative we, ideas. I think we need to tell about the whiskey. Our whiskey right? pick of the day is now. So <laughs> I am going to do the Evan Williams Single Barrel 2013 86.6 proof. It is $33. I'm giving it. A big thumbs up. Are you? I am. I'm going to give it a thumbs down. Oh, a split vote. Our uh, first season three split I, vote. And it's, it's, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's not a bad one, but I didn't like the, I didn't like the burn that came along after it had been sitting around. All right. You need to show your NFT up there on the camera so everybody has a chance to get that NFT right there in the big camera. We have David behind the board. He has been busy today. Fantastic job, David. We appreciate you, part of our Tech Time Radio crew. We got Mike Roday and myself on the second hour. Coming on up, we're going to have some extended stories from our first deal. We're going to start out with a new segment called Letters. And we got, of course, your favorite segment back, Protect Yourself Yay. Today. Drink more alcohol uh, today. That's all right. We will be continuing our glass on the second hour. We enjoyed each of you guys, and we hope that you can join us. If you don't have your radio, come back for Tech, tech go, Time Go take a look, Tech Time Radio Plus. We'll see you in a little <laughs> bit. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us on Tech Time Radio. We hope that you had a chance to have that hmm moment today in technology. The fun doesn't stop there. We recommend that you go to techtimeradio.com and join our fan list for the most important aspect of staying connected and winning some really great monthly prizes. We also have a few other ways to stay connected, including subscribing to our podcast on any podcast service from Apple to Google and everything in between. We're also on YouTube, so check us out on youtube.com slash tech time radio all one word we hope you enjoyed the show as much as we did making it for you from all of us at tech time radio remember mum's the word have a safe and fantastic week hey mike yeah what's going on hey have you heard of virtual pbx no what is that like virtual peanut butter and jelly virtual pbx provides affordable business phone plans for entrepreneurs that need a way to connect to their customers. Never give out a personal number again. They offer business telephone numbers, called forwarding, professional greetings, and so much more. Isn't that the phone you have in your office? That's correct. I have a virtual PBX Yalink, the T21P E2. But it is the same phone that you will see on the NBC show, The Office. So when you see Dwight and Jim slamming down the phone, I have that same exact phone. Nice. Do you have a stapler and jello? It's the most important aspect of an office, making sure you have a good telephone. Yeah. And I think you can save 15% off when you sign up, right? That's correct. If you go to virtualpbx.com forward slash podcast, again, that's forward slash podcast, you can save up to 15% and you can enjoy their new flex plans starting as low as $13 per month. Well, that sounds awesome. Yes. Are you looking to start a new business or have to have professional greetings, call forwarding, texting, voicemail, virtual receptionist? If you're looking for any of those items, don't go anyplace out but virtual PBX. That sounds cool. I, I I kind of want a sandwich right now. Mike wants a sandwich, and you deserve a better IP phone solution. Visit Virtual PBX. Visit them at virtualpbx.com forward slash podcast. We would like to thank Podcorn for sponsoring this episode of Tech Time Radio. Explore sponsorship opportunities and start monetizing your podcast by signing up at podcorn.com forward slash podcasters. Let me tell you about Podcorn. Podcorn is an absolute must for any podcaster starting out. Now, when we started out Tech Time Radio, we started out in a back office with a couple of mics. We expanded to a studio. And then now, as you can see, we're on the radio and have distribution into other markets. Having the ability to have Podcorn at the start of our podcast would have been a dream come true. Guess what? With Podcorn, you now have the amazing opportunity for podcasts to receive sponsorship, such as host reads, interview segments, and topical discussions. With Podcorn, there's no middleman. Podcasters of all size can browse and choose opportunities right on their platform, set their own rates, and collaborate with brands directly without exclusivities. You never give up the rights of your podcast in Podcorn, and they're here to support you everywhere possible. Visit podcorn.com. Again, that's podcorn.com. Podcorn is a true success for those starting their podcast dreams. Coming to you from the shores of the Pacific Northwest, keeping you up to date on technology while enjoying a little whiskey on the side. With leading edge topics, along with special guests, to navigate technology in a segmented, stylized radio program. The information that will make you go, hmm. 
Pull up a seat, raise a glass with our hosts as we spend the next hour talking about technology for the common person. Welcome to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum. Welcome to Tech Time Radio. What, with Nathan what was Mum. that? That's our new second hour music. I don't. Re- I don't recall that. We we had that at the production meeting. And you said you liked it. it. It's. I think you switched it. I didn't. How can I switch it? It was the same MP3. I don't file. know. It was. It sounded different. But it, it was okay. It was okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's, just, that is I mean, our more relaxed second hour that's of our, our drunk show. music well no it's not <laughs> drunk music it's more relaxed and jazzy so okay so it's 100 percent royalty free that we own it the other one I, the other one we don't quite own so so we're gonna well, like that well, one even better that's right. all right and did you notice the announcer is a little different announcing at the beginning and the end so i wasn't paying there. attention to him oh, okay. i was i was like trying to figure out that weird music all right well welcome <laughs> to tech time radio hour two if you join tech us time plus that's right this is the plus hour here we're going to charge you nine dollars and we'll let you subscribe to it and then we will uh uh, replay it Only on, the, uh, on the on the Bitcoin <laughs> yeah. from uh, in mixed <laughs> recommendation places. That's right. On, right. Our, right. on our website, quote if you, unquote. If you join us in the first hour and you're joining us for the second hour, welcome back. This is going to be a little bit more relaxed. It's a little bit different type of aspect for a show. We expect it to be very entertaining and we'll probably adopt and change as we progress. Um, but we got some pretty cool segments that we've planned out. Yeah. We spent a lot of time. Thanks to all of the staff at Tech Time Radio, including our production staff here today on the show, David, Mike, and, and myself. And then we have Gwen, Josh, uh, Jin Lee. Lee, everybody else back in, in at home that has helped be a part of this. So thank you guys very much. We are excited. We are from 4 to 6 p.m. And we are streaming on Facebook, twitch.tv, Facebook.com forward slash Tech Time Radio, Twitter.com forward slash Tech Time Radio. If there's any. You got that all right? You got that down? Yeah. So if you there's need to put any. It on Pinterest. Uh, uh, well, we're not on Pinterest. What we can take pictures of too, man. All right. So now we're it's really excited. Alpha. Our website has released. So our brand new website and needs to be updated. So there's some stuff still that are kind of in templates. I didn't have time to update everything. It's a WordPress site from our old Wix site to a WordPress. We think Christina Petrie.com yes. that helped design everything because that she was did a, a great job. She did a fantastic job. We can watch our streams there. You can watch a lot of information. And the most cool, unique, important aspect of that is you can sign up for our newsletter. So our staff, Mike. Myself and my staff are going to write a monthly newsletter about any topics that interest what? ourselves. Yeah, you, we talked about this at the deal. Yeah, were were, I, you, were yeah. you like dozing off? I think maybe. Well, maybe was that the night whiskey. that I was drunk? No, maybe having some whiskey on the side, weren't you? Maybe. No. <laughs> All right, so we are already drinking our whiskey from the first show, and it's our Evan Williams Single Barrel 2013 86.6 proof. So as we continue through. That's right. You gave it a thumbs up and I gave it a thumbs down. But I'm going to keep drinking. We're going to still keep drinking it though? That's right. So it's not bad enough it's, that you have to. It's not. No, it's not. It's you just not wouldn't pay 30 bucks for it. No, I wouldn't pay 30 bucks for it. It wouldn't be on my shelf. I got you. All right. So you can always find out more information about everything that we're doing at techtimeradio.com. This is a two-hour show for the everyday common person with a simple format so you do not have to geek out. Our second hour show today is going to continue on with our tastings. We have some more in-depth segments on our We're first talk subject. talk about some of the stuff we talked about. In the we did. Uh, the highlights on our top five stories in the first five minutes, we just kind of highlight some shows. We're going to get a little bit more in-depth on a couple of those things. Um, if you would like to engage us specifically about the COVID-19 passports. verification passports that are moving from paper to digital and you have an opinion about it right now reach out to us at 425-373-5527 or 188-298-KKNW or you can hashtag us on twitter don't be driving and hashtag us so make sure you pull over to the side of the road hashtag tech time radio if you have a question that, or you text, have something baby. that you're Speech very passionate about that please take care of it because we're going to talk about all the countries that have developed different aspects in this application itself so it's time to welcome mike gorday to the show now in our first show, we essentially ask you a question to start out the day. This time, yeah, we're, we're really talking. excited because we have um, some conversation cards presented to us by the Love Shack. And, and I heard that the Love Shack, it's a KKNW program. And I heard someone was on the show this Thursday. Is that correct? I was on the show, yeah. And how'd that go? It went very well. It went very well. Yeah. What, were, what were your subjects that they asked you about? Uh, we were talking about how technology affects relationships. Oh, okay. So, and we we had a very nice discussion about it. And uh, sh- do we know how I got on the show? Uh, how did you get on the show? <laughs> I got on the show because somebody threw me under the bus. Oh, who's, who's that? <laughs> I, I don't know if anybody threw you under the oh, bus. Oh, wait a minute. Well, well, I, I, I think they just said that you probably needed some help on the dating stuff, right? But you don't. You wanted I, to be very clear. You do not uh, need help dating. That's right. You were like, oh, he's he's having some. And they created a commercial. They created a commercial for that, you that, that, that was, you're going to hear in, in this that, segment. That we'll so you're hear. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right. So 
<laughs> Each week. No, they were great. They were great. They, they were, were great. A- Stacy Bartley and her husband, great job. Right. They're putting together a program. It's it's becoming really good. We're going to probably do some cross promotions with them. You're going to hear their ads. Did you hear our ad on their program? I did, yeah. yeah so, so we're getting while some While they were filming me w- while I was in the backstage. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You should have been like, I love that ad. All right. So here we go. We're going to start out each one of these shows with essentially their conversational cards. And we got David involved in this. So all three of us. So th- this is for a romance This thing, is right? for a kind of a romance thing, but we're going to be Are doing we gonna it. Are going to do some bromancing like, here? Are we going to do some bromancing? Yeah, I went through about okay. 15 of these, and they're all pretty appropriate. So it's just conversational Oh, starts. we need to get to the non-appropriate. Okay. If you could write a book. <laughs> this is kind of like, what would it be about, and what would the title be? I've written books. I know you have. So we'll start with you first. Go first. You want, you want to know the one that I wrote? What's the, what's the name of the one that you wrote that you didn't finish the story plot to? So the, guys... the, one, the one that I wrote that about human behavior is why we suck. Why we suck. <laughs> <laughs> did, it, did it not sell well? I have it. I have it public. I'm still okay. working on it, but okay. it, it's 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 called "Why We Suck: The the uh, Hubris and Hypocrisy of the Human Animal." Oh wow! Okay. How about that? Okay. How about that title? Uh, that sounds good, <laughs> David. You're next up. But you got you. How you're... can I follow that? Well, you know, that's what that's what happens when you <laughs> you got a, a book. Title? Is this like a relationship type thing, or just a the, book title in general? Oh, I'm just using a book title in general. Well, I'm not doing a relationship. You know, if you one. do it with your with your Significant, Significant other, than other I, guess, I think it would be... be different book titles, don't yeah, you? Uh, well, no, <laughs> yeah. mine will be the same. <laughs> mine is still going to be the same. All right, well, all right. what, what was your book title? Well, I've got to wait David's up. David, what would you do? Uh, why don't you do yours first? All right, The Last Starfighter Part 2. Oh, my God. The Last Starfighter Part 2. I've been waiting for the sequel. You are, I don't, I don't you care what it is. As it's, predictable as well, that's right. a glacier. I know. Absolutely. The Last Starfighter Part 2. And Alex is up there, and then is is crazy. They're talking about recreating that movie. I know, but they're going to do a whole new cast, which I don't want. I just want it to well, continue. Yeah, but everybody's like freakishly old now. So and Zenturi's dead. Yeah, dead. Actually, he's now. Dead. he can't come back and, and still right. be dead. But the last Starfighter. Two. That's right. By Nathan <laughs> Mum. 20, 20, what, 30 years? It'll be the number one seller. I'll just tell okay, you now that you've helped me, that it's not relationship. It just could be anything. How about this? Um, from a movie that I once saw. It's a simple game. You hit the ball, you run There's the no ball, you catch baseball, the ball. Buddy. There's no crying There's in no baseball, buddy. There's no crying in baseball. Are you going to do a Field of Dreams, too? Uh, maybe a lot. Uh, between that and Bull Durham. Bull Durham? Yeah. No, the best baseball movie of He's all time, The Natural. Bull Fields. Uh, the, Bull Fields. <laughs> the, there you go. The Natural. You see The Natural, Robert Redford? I rem- Yes. Oh, I that's, a, that's a great flick. He's like bleeding down. Yeah. His bat breaks. The boy brings no, the ball up. He hits the lights. There's no he gets crying the home in baseball. That's, that's my favorite quote. Field of Dreams yeah. is pretty good, too. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah uh, all right. Here we go. All right. So that builds our it. conversation out there. So we are going to start our first <laughs> segment. Are you sure? We yeah. want to. We, we, yeah. can beat, we can beat this one with a bat for a while. No, absolutely. I got it. About 52 uh, cards no, of this. I so intended on that one. That's right. <laughs> no, no. It was totally intended. <laughs> All right. So we're going to move on to today's show. I'm not we're, a cat. We're going to start each of our segments on segment two with a new segment we call Letters. Letters. And the letters all have fun. That's, That's right. That's Let's from start Perry Como, isn't that it? That is absolutely from Perry oh Como. My God. So we got letters here. So this is the, the informative emails that I have received during the week. Uh, this includes scams, phishing emails, and outright mistruths, legitimately disguised as official mail, and it is part of our letter segment. So is I'm this, just going to read. Is this it. the Prince of Namibia? Well, you know what? Let me just tell you. I printed out like 18, and that was just this week. So I, I, this we're going to have so many <laughs> We don't of these. need to go through all of we, them. We're not going to go okay. through them. We're gonna th- we got, make sure, David, you got a five-minute timer on me, because I could go forever. Here yeah, we go. He, he will. All you right. From that. iCloud, and, and the address is U51APWT8G at orcarnationcatalog.com. Now, if I wouldn't actually print it out to see that, uh-huh. it would just look like it's coming from iCloud. Your iCloud idea has been locked on Wednesday, April 28th, 2021. Reference 9087180. Your iCloud has been locked on Wednesday, April 28th, 2021 for security reasons. Reference number, listen to this, 70432. So different series. Different reference Different number. reference number. So I guess the, the subject reference number is, is even more important than the, su- than the subject right here. All okay. right. If you do not respond within 12 hours to this email, Y-O-V-J-I-Y-V-I-P, uh, or 
the URL at hkgmdple at salesprotection.scams.com. <laughs> so, dot scams. So, so they got a, scams in their title. That's awesome. Your iCloud will, you. will will be deleted. Well, if you don't click and print it out, you wouldn't know it because it's just the hyperlink stuff, right? Right. So, the, so you just see a link there that would say that it was taken care of. All right. For your convenience, you make uh, appreciate your patience. Please contact us directly. And we will get back to you. Okay. So this, now it this comes is, from Oud. They forgot the cloud. Oud Distribution International the, the, Ltd. Yeah. Okay. So let's be clear that this this is a phishing email. That they is a phishing email. They want you to email. click on that hyperlink to get something from you. What 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 do they think? What do you think they're trying to get? So from they're you? gonna. It'll come, so when you click on the email, it will come on up and it'll look just like a Macintosh iCloud login and for username. Mm-hmm. And so I, I clicked on it just to see what it was. So great question. And it came on up, and so as I would type in my name and my password, it would then keep it on their server, mm-hmm. and then they would immediately try to log into and my then iCloud they could account. Log into your account, correct? Okay, so that's that's very important. That is very important, right? Not you. <clears throat> All right. And what are they doing? They're taking they're taking advantage of your fear of your security, your security breach. But they're surely not spending any time for attention to detail they, or, but or here's the or thing: they don't need to. That's the problem. Yeah. They don't need to because we're so used to just scanning things nowadays that we're like, oh, crap. Oh, this is something scary. I need to respond to it. That's correct. Here we go. Next email. We got um, support uh, server 429-2021 from info at znvo.com. Z-E-N-V-I-O.com. Importance. Hi to Nathan <laughs> Mum. Office 365, your password for Nathan at ee-services.com is due to expire today, Thursday, April 29th, 2021. So they send it in the morning, send it. Click on the link below to keep your account active. Oh, no. We respect your privacy. And then it puts my company, eesupport.com support. So I, so they kind of missed the, the little part at the end of it. So again, a phishing attempt, said my server was out, wasn't going to take care of it. Next letter that we have up here. Is David giving you a finger? Not yet. Okay. No, no. Forcepoint. Email at forcepoint.com. Practice steps to achieve continuous zero trust model. View this email in a web page. So the forcepoint.com looks like a legitimate email address. Mm-hmm. On the major headache for dis- for data security teams, we have provided you the most up-to-date ebook that will allow you to understand Ooh. how to protect security. This ebook is worth thousands, and we're providing it to you for free. How about Learn that? Learn about private access the... and build a better. There's that fake. It's yep. worth millions. That's the key right there. Yep. It's worth millions, but we're going to give it to you for free. Protect your apps, your threats. Click on the link right here to learn more. So they send you what they end up doing on this one is they'll actually send you an ebook of this file itself. But then what happens is they have your email address and they're going to continue to find more information. So this is not necessarily a phishing scam. This is a validation email attempt to see if the email will be responded to to open up for other phishing attacks at a later time. Right. Okay. So explain that a little bit more. Yep. They're, they're so just they're trying they're to, see just trying going... to make the email. Are they? They're making sure the email is valid and that I'm going to respond. And if I respond to information regarding this security risk, they know that I am interested in security so they can tailor a special customized email specifically right. for so that. Right, so they're, they're, they're just basically spamming emails. Yep. They're looking for real active emails. And for Pe- people to respond people. on a subject matter. Right. All right, here we go. It's probably the last one because we're going to move on. This one, i got so many good ones here. Oh, here's the, here's the, here's the one that always pop, pops up. EE Services received a new fax message. Now, I, I don't have fax messages through the service. I have, I've gotten these. I, okay, so this I have virtual PBXs, right. I've told you. Uh, one of our sponsors, and we've had their CEO on, and we talked with them, and great time, COO on, and talked with them. So I know that if I get a fax, there's thanks, the, David. There's the solution. Um, if I get a fax, I know that it's going to be coming from virtual PBX. Mm-hmm. That's what it says at the very first title. So as soon as you send me a, a thing that says e-service fact, now it's coming from Shipwreck. At memorymamapress.com. So, memory mama, huh? So memory mama, mama, M-A-M-A, memory, memory mama, mama. So memory mama, <laughs> press.com, which doesn't seem like a legit site. It says uh, two scan pages in the PDF HTML format. Please click on here and download so you can take a look at your Ooh. newest information those facts. Now, if you click on this and you do not have a good virus anti-protection, 
and you can get one for free, which is called Windows Defender, which would pick this up. But if you don't have that on your machine and you decide to use some third party that we told you not to use. Like a Vast. It, like a Vast or a McAfee. <laughs> um, so using any of those, um, essentially what would happen is you would download an executable on your machine. Mm-hmm. And that would either give them remote access to log into your machine remotely with an alert or what it could do is it could actually put a worm virus into your machine. So just and hang out until a later time. At a later time, and then they could access my machine and go into my Coinbase account and sell my stuff out if they don't okay. have two-factor authentication. So that is the end of our segment, and that is called Letters. We will be doing that every week to start out our second hour. It should bring some excitement and joy. I got so many of and these then, great letters. Now, and then we can give you tips, right? We they can, can give me tips. Now, if you have a great email that comes to you, because I tried to find the Prince email. I couldn't find the- Dude, that's don't the, get me started about my email. I <laughs> hate my email. <laughs> there you go. So, uh, so essentially, if you could get an email- that's got to be a meme somewhere. That's got to be a meme. Of Namibia. So uh, I, I tried to find it a little bit, and I don't have any in my inbox specifically itself. I could find other ones. But if you have a great email that was sent to you that you didn't click on, please don't send me a click on one. You can actually go to our website. We're so excited about this. And call in the top uh, right-hand corner. There's be a caller. Click on that link. Tell me about the email. It'll send an email to our main distribution email list. I will personally respond to that and I would love to read it on the air for you. So this is an opportunity for you to submit yeah. your emails to us so I can read them and laugh about how crazy some of these well, emails I get are. Stuff, I get stuff on my phone, you know, vishing, not phishing. Oh, what, what, where we, they, we talked they, about that. Yeah, we talked about that before where they, they tell me my social security number has been compromised and the FBI is looking for me and stuff like so that. So I always get these banks that I've never heard of. So I, I love getting a Wells Fargo thing. I have no Wells Fargo account anywhere. Wells Fargo account is about to expire. Like, oh, fantastic. I had money I didn't even know about. Okay, well, right. I guess I'll have to let that expire. This is where laziness is really helpful. All right. Well, we are going to go to our first commercial break. When we come on back, we have lots to talk about. We're going to be talking about uh, passports, about COVID-19, specifically digital technology and how uh, each of the countries around the world are using different technology processes. So if you got an opinion about this, call us 425-373-5527 or 888-298-KKNW, which is 888-298-5569. We'd love to put you on the air also. Hey, honey, did you hear what I heard? Hmm, what's that, babe? I heard Mike over there at Tech Time Radio. He's he's like battling the, he's or he's in the, like that, the, you know, the, the swimming with the sharks in that singles arena, if you will. You know? Oh, bless his heart. Oh. And I also heard, like you did, that maybe things aren't going so great. You know what he needs, babe? I think he needs to spend a little time in Love Shack. Yeah, the Love Shack. That, the Love Shack that airs every Thursday at 1 p.m. PST on KKNW 1150. Come on, Mike. Come on over and join. We got gotcha. you. Upper Left Corner is a PNW true crime podcast now streaming on all major podcast platforms. If you get excited when your favorite true crime podcast tells a story about a place that you've been to or the town that you live in, then Upper Left Corner podcast is for you. Each week, I tell you a story of a crime that has taken place in the PNW and give you background about the town the crime occurred in. If you like true crime, check out Upper Left Corner podcast now available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, and more. Ace Hardware is a helpful place with prompt, friendly service, knowledge, and the little things that make a big difference. Service. Selection. Advice. Community involvement. Competitive prices. Convenience. Located near you. And the things you need, such as... House keys. Lawn and garden. Plumbing. Electrical. Hardware. Grills. Outdoor living supplies. And even nuts and bolts. When you visit Ace Hardware, you'll be greeted at the door and given the help you need. So come visit us at Ace Hardware in Evergreen Way in Everett, Lake Stevens, and now Stanley. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware folks. Welcome back to Tech Time Radio. I got to get used to all this new intro music. Yeah, we got a whole bunch of new intro music. Here we go. Welcome back to Tech Time Radio with Nate the Mum. We're going to be joining our first subject that we talked about. What? I'm sorry. What are you thinking about? The, the music is... Kind of like 70s stuff. So maybe it's I'm almost late. like almost like bam bam chicka bam bam. Wow! Well, no, oh, it's it's <laughs> it's not. Wow! I think I think that was one of my music things. That wasn't David's music. Okay. Thing. So all right. Okay. Here we go. Uh, welcome back to Tech Time Radio again. If you want to join us on the call, we're going to be talking about the COVID nineteen vaccine digital passports in this app. We talked about it on our top five stories in the first five minutes, but we are now going to move into our next subject, which is called Ask the Expert. This is a segment we call Ask the Experts. 
All right, so let's dive more into this. What's that? You repeated it. I again. did, didn't I? I yeah, said that. Uh, and you know what? I, you know what? And David was probably ready to go there. I, 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 I did it the whole first hour. One finger salute. <laughs> I know. He was like, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> he's gonna chuck something. That's right. Uh, <laughs> all right. He, he's all on top of it. He's got a lot of work to do. Today. I know. We get him so. So much we we did it. see that maybe the Facebook stream it looks like it maybe went out. Uh, maybe Facebook only lets you stream for an hour. So, I don't know what that so is. So we, if you want to watch our show, it's on TwitchTV.com. But don't go there. Go to techtimeradio.com and click on the in process feed to watch our show directly from our website. Yeah. It helps us do that. create our SEO and everything else. So just go to techtimeradio.com, watch the feed there, or you can always go to KKNW 1150's webpage and watch the show or listen to it live. There you go. All right. So let's talk about this. What expert are we asking? Well, we're going to ask the experts because we're going to actually take an article out of the New York Times. So the New York Times are the experts that kind of put this article together. So we're going to go through some facts, some information that's specifically happening regarding taking passports and apps from around the globe. This, and yeah, and this instead of our, having a, a, a This is our paper, third story from the first hour. This is our third story from the first hour. So if you want to go back and listen to Hour 1, you can watch it again on Mondays at 11 o'clock at techtimeradio.com, Hour 1, and you can hear a little bit about this. But essentially... The idea is that the platinum card for the COVID age is the vaccination certificate, right? It's a piece yeah. of paper. You, you show yeah, that? Got, yeah, I got mine. Okay, so you got that right there. So that's, yeah, that's kind of like your, your get-out-of-jail-free card, right? Well, I haven't had to use it for anything, but... Now, should, isn't the idea of this... So this is what I... This is this me and you had this conversation off-air already. Isn't yeah. the idea that if we all get vaccinated, that we're supposed to be able to go back and enjoy regular life again? Well, yeah, that's the that's the end goal. Okay. But we're getting all we're getting the vaccination so that we all build up immunity, and then we move into herd immunity. That's that's when there's more people who are vaccinated who are not more okay. people running around with antibodies, so the the disease doesn't spread as quickly. It doesn't mean that the disease is going to go away. Yeah, that makes sense. And I'm not, of course, I'm not a medical doctor, so I don't know all the ins and outs of this stuff. I just Okay. To know, know so, so let's say you want to travel now, right? Yeah. You got, you got vaccinations. <clears throat> Some countries would allow you in. Some countries would well, not allow you I in. I think we're still we're still the the kid in the corner. I think we we don't have any. We have a lot of travel restrictions about out of the U.S. Right. Correct. But there are a lot of countries that will ha- that make you have to quarantine for fourteen days. So right. If you come on in there. You got to be for fourteen days. So let's talk about tools. Are you going to carry around? So I, I travel. I previously COVID. I traveled a lot. Two things that bothered me. One, I loved Alaska Airlines and I loved having my ticket on my phone. That was very simple. I come on up to the scanner. I put my phone on the scanner. It would scan it, say valid ticket. Right. And then I had to reach into my pocket and get your, and get get my passport, get my passport. Then I had to get another part that would be my validation for any vaccinations if I was moving into a third world country then and, and they wanted to make sure those vaccinations are taken care of. Mm-hmm. So the idea of being able to have this all together in digital format seems like a natural progression to move into. Well, yeah, this is where technology helps us out, right? This is where it can be really u- utilized as a tool for this because we all are carrying around these yeah, I tell you, my wife has mine, so I just took a picture of it. It's on my phone, but yeah, but but with, with that piece of paper, essentially anybody could write that piece of. Paper. Well, no, I was talking about our phone. Oh, your you phone. You know, we're all carrying yeah. around these little microcomputers all over the place. Most 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 of us have them nowadays. So 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 wouldn't it make sense to have that recognizable yellow card that's for international travel built into your phone? Yeah, maybe. Okay, so let's talk about that. Let's talk uh, about actually. We have a comment that just popped up here. What was that? McSherry says, I had to get certain vaccines to go to Thailand and had to give proof. Yes. So, I mean, so it's really difficult. So, so international travel is very, thanks, David, it's very difficult to take care of because you have to travel around the world. You have to show these verifications. Sometimes they, they'll call the place and if they can't get the doctor, because clearly if you're over in South Africa, it's not the same time as your doctor time. And right. if you're traveling in on a Saturday, I, I know people that have waited at customs check-ins until Monday morning when their doctors were available for them to call again because they couldn't get clearance. Nice. So, so if we could actually have this taken care of. Now, with COVID-19, lots of push to have this taken care of, to move everything that you got into digital information. And boy, let's see if it's really valid or not. So MIT expert Ramir Rasquez says that he believes the development of having paperless certificates are going to be the standard 
for everybody to have in the coming future. We have that with documents with yeah, uh, nice. DocuSign, everything yeah. that's available. He believes that this is the future itself and says that essentially this could create the ability to have a free digital pass that works with any healthcare provider and have real large significant information regarding your health care or emergency needs as you enter into a country. Right. So if you scan yourself and you let's say you have asthma or you have something to that area, you can have that. Now, but what are the problems? So Sao Paulo has cards that have a green border. In Shanghai, they have a stamp that is red. In parts of Mexico and Lebanon, there are different sizes of passports handwritten by each person to be filled out. Right. So you're you're getting you're getting to the point, right? I am. <laughs> Denmark has created an app. Okay. Called the Corona Passport. It's called Corona Pass. All right. So if you get this, very original name. Yeah. yeah, Well, you know, if you get this, essentially they would allow you, Denmark, to have the ability to do a couple things. So the first things is, are you able to go to an indoor table at a restaurant? Yes. With the Corona passport, restaurants are able to opt out of the stringent restrictions to allow you seating in both indoors and outdoor areas. Okay. How about concerts or sports games? That too, as part of the country's reopening plan, the government sanctioned indoor seating for sports and other stadium events, specifically with this pass well, holders let's go only. To Denmark. All right. Anything else? On April sixth, hair salons, tattoo businesses, and massage parlors, and driving schools. I don't know what the driving school had to do with anything, but and driving schools well, open people together are exclusively to customers with the Corona Pass. The Danish government does not track each time the pass is used, but the ministry said that they had about 3.5 million people who have visited the app and have applied to show that they are vaccinated within the country. How do you get one of these? You have to be fully vaccinated or test negative for a coronavirus within the past 72 hours and receive a temporary pass. Mm -hmm. So you can get a full pass or a temporary pass. Um, And this includes the ability to also run some of their old school train tickets. So it's kind of like a pass in Denmark. So in Denmark, you need to have this thing going on if you want to go do stuff. If you want to do something. Let's talk about the European Union is also developing a system. Of course, the EU is. All right. On I, June I 20th, getting there. On June 21st, the, <laughs> the EU is expected to introduce a certificate called the Digital Green Pass. So green green is like the marijuana green, color. Green, so green I, is go, buddy. Green is go. Green is go. So, so you get green and you're happy. and you're it's, So, okay, the Green Pass, well, yeah, which will aim to allow people- who have been vaccinated against the coronavirus to travel more freely. Under the proposed rules, each Nathan, which each nation within the block, <laughs> each Nathan, Nathan <laughs> within the block, <laughs> with the socks worked for you, didn't it? <laughs> uh, what areas you could travel? And the green digital pass holders will include admission into all sporting events, restaurants, specifically pubs, mm-hmm. and yeah. will include that's, Denmark. That's important. That also has their digital green pass. So, yeah. you, so you could use it on top of that. That's so, important. So the pubs, they specifically call it out. Now let's talk about Israel. The name of the card in Israel, the green pass. No Ooh. way. Yeah, that's good. Can I get you an indoor table? Absolutely. How about entry to a concert or sports game? Absolutely. Anything else? The pass will allow you to enter many businesses, including swimming pools, gyms, theater, and wedding halls, as well as cultured events. Consider having a wedding. If everybody has a pass, they can attend. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, they will be eliminated from any sports games or religious gatherings. Having the pass may also allow you to enter into a quarantine area for 10 to 14 days after international travel. Awesome. How does it work? Essentially, you go to the Israel's Ministry of Health, began offering the pass in early February. You essentially have to show uh, records that you have vaccinations from a registered Israeli medical professional. And this, is this a digital format? or is This it- is all digital formats. Okay. All right. Here we go. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, where's the next card here? Green Pass, blah, 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 blah. Do, do, do. Did you get lost? Um, I didn't get <laughs> Well, no, I'm trying to go quicker. All right. Oh, yeah, go fast. So let's talk about the United States. Yeah, what's so the United I, States? So, like? so let me, I was going to say Finland has one and a bunch of other people have them. So right. they're all coming out with this. So let's talk about New York. New York has essentially created the Excelsior Pass. All right. Interesting. Can, can you get it to go indoors? Yes. How about entry to a concert and sports game? That too. Anything else? The state has been requiring some government employees to use it for its businesses. But you would also be able to receive entry into restaurants, weddings, Madison Square Gardens, Barclays Center, and Yankee Stadium. According to Eric Polinsky, Vice President of Emerging Business Networks at IBM Watson Health, it is specifically designed for the state. So let's talk about this. It is a scanned green card that a person is able to attain after 14 days of full vaccination. Mm-hmm. 
Um, why is New York offering this? Well, around 400,000 people in the state have downloaded it so far and have used it to enable them to get back to their everyday lives. Right. It's, so this this is one of the issues I'm I'm guessing is going to be in the news soon. So it's going to be in the news soon because we or, talk and, about it on Tech Time well, Radio. And well, as soon as it's in the Tech Time Radio, maybe not two weeks in the from news, now. but it's going to light up social media. All right. So let's talk about New York State is the very first company to do this, working specifically with IBM to provide a certification. Right. Will there ever be a national AMP for the U.S.? No. All of the 138 million Americans who have completed their first shot should have received the same COVID-19 vaccination records created by the Center of Disease Control and Prevention. But it's up to the states, Mm -hmm. universities, private businesses to decide whether they want to require these cards or offer a supplemental app. Right. Now, we have a big announcement coming up in the state of Washington in a couple days from our governor. So I wonder if he's going to be talking about a Washington state-based app that will have supplemental items uh, if you decide to subscribe you, for that. What, do you know anything? Uh, <laughs> just, I, I may. <laughs> I, I know what we're uh, waiting for. We're, we're, so, so we'll see what it, we're, we're waiting for the bad news. All right. Throw. The White House said in March there's no plans for the Universal Federal Vaccination Database or a mandate for a single accreditation. Well, New York has promoted the Excelsior as a way to safely, quickly reopen the state. Lawmakers at at least half a dozen of the states, including Texas, Florida, Arkansas, and Washington, have been that? moving to ban businesses from requiring vaccinations and saying the privacy violation will slow down the reopening of e-commerce, but this app may help. Yeah. With the difference of the Excelsior visually, the only difference between this and other states' apps would be that when you scan it, it comes up with the Statue of Liberty. Ooh. So I wonder if we've got a Washington app. What's it come up with? It's going to come up with our it's green gonna, flag. It's going to come up or with Apple. The, the profile of George Washington. George Washington? Okay, yeah. that sounds good. All right. So do you think we should be using technology to have all of our vaccinations for COVID-19 in an app? Yeah, this is where it gets complicated. This is, this, this is where I want to hear from people, all right? <laughs> this is where this things is, start getting this. Uh, the vaccination passport app. So, again, you already have your vaccination card. We get that. But an app specifically designed for your phone or mobile device, agnostic, would you download it? Would you put your data in there? Would you trust the people that have the data in there to reopen your your yeah, deal? Yeah, this is where Let us gonna... know. Give us a call right now, 425-373-5527 or 888-298-KKNW-5569. Mike, would you put it on your app? I, I would. Okay. But- I know what's going to happen. So I would. What, you know what? what would you do? I would put it on my app. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I got I vaccinated. Have, I, I'm already on my second shot, and yeah, I specifically I have, did that I so I could get that. I got my card. I've I got I got the other app that we downloaded about the exposure. Uh, I don't mind doing this. I don't mind doing that either. Um, I mean, there's so much information but, about me out there. But this this is going to have this is going to be problematic. Oh yes, right? because if we load an app, where does it go next? Well, it's not just the app. It's there's all kinds of things that are going to. We're talking about. Per, People and their privacy issues. What about what about COVID deniers? Yeah, that the COVID doesn't exist. Go, COVID doesn't even exist. I, I, I now know, they're going to. I know not, some of those people. Uh, so do I. <laughs> now they're going to be all flipped out because they have to prove that they ha- they have been vaccinated. <laughs> you know what? Let me just say that doesn't exist. Let me just say that I, I we'll all line up at Disneyland, and when Disneyland says that you can get in with your COVID nineteen app, we'll see all those people that said that they. That they, well, don't, that, they, that they don't want to go on in and maybe, they have to go to a different line, they'll, they'll probably is, change uh, tunes. Yeah, this is going to just, this is going to add to the confusion that's already going on with other stuff like the masks and everything else. But, and there's privacy issues involved, obviously, because we're sharing medical information. Yeah, we'll talk about some of those. Yes, I mean, we'll talk me about waving those. my card, or, I was I was looking at my card. My card has my, I was. Your ID on it? Yeah, it has my insurance number oh, on there. I'm cool. like, oh, I can't show this on the. I can't show, show this it on the air. Somebody can be Mike today. Yeah, I didn't show it. You don't want to have that to happen. No. All right, <laughs> I get you. All right, so we'd love to hear from you guys again. We'd love to hear from you during the week if you want to contact us at TechTimeRadio.com and give us a feeling on what you think about this. Please do that. We're gonna head out to a commercial break. When we come on back, we got Mike's favorite segment: Protect Yourself Today. <laughs> my, your favorite what? Yeah, your, your segment? favorite Sem- segment. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Your business deserves the same expertise as that of a Fortune 500 company. 
If you need a CIO level service, why hire a full-time staff member at $250,000 a year when you can get this on-demand service for fractions of the cost? As your CIO on demand will give you the steps you need to take so as to minimize interruption to your business and profitability and provide you and your business with training and education to prevent future attacks. To get an efficiency review for your business today, contact us at www.ee-services.com. New Advil Dual Action with Acetaminophen fights pain in two ways. Advil targets pain at the source, while Acetaminophen blocks pain signals. The future of pain relief is here. New Advil Dual Action. I like that music. Oh, you like that music? That, See, that, that was, was some, pretty good, wasn't that was, it? That was that was that was a lot better than the bounce bounce chicka bow music. All right, all right, okay. So let me um, get into our next segment, which is your favorite. We call this "Protect Yourself Today." We call this "Drink Yourself Today." Protect yourself today. All right. Story number one: Five U.S. agencies using Pulse Secure VPNs have been possibly breached. So the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure uh, Security Agency, which is owned by the United States government, investigating whether five government agencies may have been breached when attacked exploited vulnerabilities in the Pulse Connect Secure VPN product, according to a senior agency official. So what's a VPN? It's a virtual, virtual private, private network. network. The idea of a VPN is when you're on the internet, you want to be secure with your data so it that hide your, hide your it data. hide your information, hide what you're trafficking on your IP protocol, which is your communication back and forth. So you use a virtual private networking to hide all your information there. Essentially, the United States government has been using this company called Pulse Connect Secure VPN Products. Mm-hmm. Well, according to a senior agency official, they have been breached. Oh, no. Earlier this month, researchers at the security firm FireEye... <laughs> oh, it's your favorite. <laughs> Published the report. Well, they got this one right. So I'm um, you know what? Broken clock's correct at least twice a day. Oh, listen. All right. Here. So Let's security go. firm fire. Take, a, take another drink <laughs> and then do it again. Published a report about attack groups attempting to exploit four Pulse Connect security vulnerabilities, including a zero day flaw discovered in April that is now tracked to the C V two thousand twenty release. Ivante, the parent company of Pulse Secure, has issued patches for the vulnerability and urged customers to apply them. Immediately, following the disclosure by FireEye and Avanti, CISA issued an emergency directive requiring executive branch agencies to run tests using the Pulse Connect security integrity tool. So they had to create a tool to go on in and see if they were still using their vulnerability. So they found out what the vulnerability was uh, on their networks back in April of tw- uh, April 23rd. This found out last week that many of the results found that at least five executive branches and agencies had evidence of suspicious malicious activity within the networks. Matt Hartman, the deputy executive assistant director for the CISA, uh, said that 26 federal agencies use Pulse Connect secure VPNs. The CISA is aware of at least five federal civilian agencies who have run the Pulse Connect security tool that have identified indications of potential unauthorized access. We are working with each agency to validate them to see what's going on. The Justice Department is taking a look at what's going on with those breaches. They, as they should. So VPN, <laughs> not always secure. We talked about that, right? You got to be careful on your VPN selections of what you use. Anything you're doing anywhere online, you have to be careful with. You should always make sure. That, I mean, that, nothing is 100%. But your IT individuals sh- should be smart enough to make sure that they provide like, the security patches. Yeah. I, I have people sometimes call me and say, hey, you know what? I, I'm having problems with my computer and I have this going on. I say, okay, well, let's go take a look and see. Do you have any Windows updates? Oh, yeah. I just don't update them, though. I'm like, why wouldn't you update? As soon as there's an update for an Apple device, a Windows device, anytime someone releases an update, the idea is you should immediately patch it because they only release updates when they find they have yeah, an issue with is, the problem. This is like sex ed. What's that? Right? Yeah. It's like sex ed. Okay. Explain that to me. The only the only true way of not getting in trouble is abstinence. Okay, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Okay, I, I guess. I guess, Yeah, I don't remember my sex ed class like wow. that. Wow, you know? that's all I can say. Is, wow, <laughs> you were you were trying to figure out where that was going. Yeah, I it? did. I was I was kind of hoping. I was like, okay, David, make sure you have your hands on the button. What's he talking about? All right, so yeah, but essentially, 
if you're in charge of IT, you need to make sure you patch your stuff that you have available. That is like 101, and IT shops don't do that, and people don't update their devices. Absolutely, everybody should update their devices every time they have the opportunity yeah, what about to What that. about when a, uh, an update doesn't work and you don't know how to fix it? Um... <laughs> Did I stump you there? If the the update happens, most software tools have the ability to do a rollback. So if you you do a release and you have a problem with that, most uh, operating systems absolutely have the ability to do a rollback. If they don't have an ability to do a rollback and there's something that goes wrong with that, normally if you contact the customer support, they're going to work with you immediately to try to fix that because they don't want that to happen to other people. Yeah. So I, I, I don't know if I've ever really ran into that. Even with Windows stuff, I still update it immediately, and I've never really had a problem. Yeah, one, one of the computers that I have has that problem where it, it stumbles on the updates, and so it'll it'll – log in that the update never happened and then it, and then it'll try and go and do it again. So there's a Windows update fix utility tool that you need to, to do underneath the control panel that has the ability to go in and See, fix it. See now that that's update. why I, that's why it's good for you to be in my life. So so yeah, so so is it is it your surface over there that you have? No. Okay. No, but it's, no, it's so one you, of my older ones. So yes, yeah, there's actually a tool so that sometimes happens, but Windows has an ability if you look up Windows update fix patch where you can actually go on into the control panel and click on the Windows Fix patch, and it'll actually take care of those. There so any ones that aren't taken care of. Maybe we'll help that out later. All right, story number two. The Justice Department, and we're not talking like the Justice Department of the Justice League, but the Department Justice Department of Justice. Uh, is launching a ransomware task force. Which is about time. So from CNN Business, the Justice Department has created a new task force dedicated to rooting out and responding to the growing threat of ransomware, according to an agency memo obtained by CNN Business. The new initiative follows that the memo describes as the worst year ever last year for ransomware attacks. Incidents in which hackers seize controls of victims' computers and refuse to unlock them until they receive a payment. The Department of Justice effort highlights how cybersecurity threats have become a major focus of the Biden administration, particularly following other recent high-profile network security instances such as Russian-based attacks. The Microsoft Exchange server vulnerabilities and an attribute to Chinese hackers. The new task force will unify efforts across the federal government to pursue and distribute. So this is going to help out with story number one. Actions to include takedown of servers, the use of spreaded reasonable ransomware seizures, and criminal prosecution to essentially take care of this. Okay. Is this going to be an effective measure? Um, So I think it will be because what they're going to do is they're going to have kind of a no ask, uh, no tell when I decide to take down a server. So if I find a server that's maliciously doing stuff up there, I can use technology on the back end of the internet. And mm-hmm. even if it's a device, they still have to connect and get an IP address from someplace. So the worst case scenario, if you have a server, you still have to have some ISP that's serving up the information. The United States government is just going to go on in and start shutting down all these ISP services and just say, you know what, you can't have this thing taken care of. We'll, we'll let you come back to us and tell us why you want to have this, but we're going to just start shutting you down and not letting you have access oh. to the areas itself. So it's going to be a pretty aggressive model. That's, that is aggressive. I'm, and I'm, I'm guessing there's going to be some legislation around that at some point uh, due to uh, due process. So I'd expect, so, th- so you take a look back in the 1980s, 1990s, early when you had uh, modems, a lot of bulletin board services. Essentially right. what happened, AT&T, all the phone companies got together and they were actually monitoring transactions by modem-based devices, and yep. essentially those modem-based devices were able to see, hey, you know what, this person's sending a lot of data back and forth. We don't know if they're really regulated, and they were able to shut down bulletin board service. I know that there was one that I had for a wild card device to copy my Nintendo 64 stuff, and it went down one day and never went back never up Never came so, back up. Oh, uh, yeah, that was, those were the fun days. Let me tell you about that. All right, yeah, those were, those were the days. All right, so going back to our last story that we talked about, that we said that we'd talk about more. More into our social media apps. Kitty, the social media co- for kids co- for kids. That's correct. One point two million apps. We talked about this on our previous hour. Uh, I just was really excited to find out Homogenous Entertainment was in Bothell. I did not know that. I Who's didn't it? know that. Either. And Sierra Online was humongous. In, is it humong- uh, so, humongous? Well, it was. So it's it's humongous because hum- it's not really spelled like humongous. So it's that's humongous. Is it hum- humongous? It came yeah. up with an error when I put it in. Uh, uh, my uh, word processor. Oh, okay. Well, so, it's just a, it's just a, the pronoun- <laughs> it's just a play on words. Okay. So it's supposed to be humongous, humongous. Entertainment. 
So let's talk. So we talked about this. So we we have a couple apps that are out there. We didn't get to spend a lot of time specifically talking about. Do you realize Disney has add their app Disney Club Penguin for over fourteen years? Yeah, I believe that. So it's already been out there during the time, and they have already had essentially but, social media yeah, for kids of all ages. Yeah, this is. Yeah, this is yeah I remember combo. my daughter playing with that. You know, now she's eighteen, but yeah, she. I remember playing when she was a lot younger. Yeah, so so that's so this so they've had yeah social media apps out there for young kids. I mean, my kids had these little webkins or guys that were like yeah. these animals that you'd scan something and would kind of tell the story, and then they had these other little bot type of deal, and then you had the Star Wars figures that you put on your three hundred and sixty devices. So yeah, yeah, my my son had some of those. So. Okay, so Disney's been doing this. So why is it all of a sudden this zigazat zig zigazoo? Social media app for kids ages three to twelve getting such negative press. Well, the Zigazoo is getting a lot of positive press. Well, it's also getting a lot of negative. But it's so getting it, a lot. Of, yeah, it's kind pro- of on the border of both th- sides. Yeah, this is the problem: is that we we already know what social media is doing to us globally, in general, right? But now we're going to start doing this. We're marketing this stuff to younger and younger audiences. I said earlier that this is like the virtual version of selling cigarettes to kids because remember remember several years ago when all the cigarette companies got tar- trouble for targeting children? Yep. This is the same thing. And there's there's a lot of complicated issues around these. There's complicated issues? Yeah. So I I, 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 well, see, think I can about, see a three, think about it too, a three-year-old, right? Think little young about, to probably think, be doing social Think about your, your – yeah, what what – what really is a three-year-old going to be doing on a, one of these, like, apps? But, I have no idea. But, but what if you're about, a six- or seven-year-old kid? Think about your six- or seven. Okay, you got your, your a six- or seven-year-old kid who you're, who's doing these little films and sharing it, and they're looking for likes, and they're not getting any, so they're feeling rejected, right? Okay. And then, and then we have the opposite side, which I don't know that a lot of people think about, but a lot of pedophiles use these types of platforms in order to get their kinks. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. So you've got that going on because who can watch this stuff? So, so th- that is, I guess that is kind of a, I, I how do you connect? How I, do you connect with other people? How do you verify that the person on the other end of that? It's like Facebook. You really don't because it's your like, parents have right. to sign up, right? Your right, parents, your have, parents to have to do it, but it's like Facebook where anybody can f- try to friend you and there's no way of, unless you kind of have a savviness about the system whether verifying that that person is who they say they are. Because in a virtual world, I can be anybody I want. That's true. So Pop Jam's been around, too, for over 10 years. But right. they at least monitor their apps from only 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. So that, yeah. at midnight when, you're, yeah. when, you're, when your three-year-old I, should I'm be. A, I'm a little curious <laughs> about a three-year-old <laughs> doing doing videos at okay, So what about the parents that have their kids and they plop them up? I, I mean – I, I do these videos for a um, a preschool that um, I do, and I, there's car racing videos that I look for all the time. Mm-hmm. And cause the kids in the preschool, I like putting the little car videos in. And, and every once in a while, you'll see a parent uh, worth a dad, and like the kid will be like the narration of this whole car race set that's going on. I think you can see a dad's filming it, professionally edited and, and everything like that. Is that a good thing for the kid? Because he really enjoys there's, it. Dad's there. There's positives kinda... and negatives to all of this stuff. There's positives and negatives. That's that's what's so complicated about it. We, because I kind of think that would be a cool thing to do, right? It, yeah, yeah. You're, 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 you're building want, a you're, racetrack. You're, your kids talking about yeah, it. Yeah, your and, kids talking about it. It's like the kid with the rocks, you know, yeah. whatever. He's sitting on the porch talking about his Home Depot rocks <laughs> he painted, and he's really excited about that. Mom or dad gets their little iPhone out, films it for right, a little bit. Right, but what are, what are we teaching these kids? What what is the are we teaching them to be celebrities? Are that we are we doing it as parents so that our so that we can live vicariously through our our children's possible success as a YouTube child star? I don't know. Yeah. Or I mean, are we really connecting with other people? Because well, that's the in hard the COVID nineteen era now though is this the only way that you connect with people right now because you, you haven't been able Con- to be in school for yeah a year. we talked about and we talked about this on Love Shack right so it's the same thing we're because of COVID, we've had to expand the way we could try to connect with other human beings. But through virtual systems, connection is is a very slippery slope. It is. It is. Well, we are wrapping up our second hour of Tech Time Radio. Hopefully people enjoyed what we had here to talk about. We uh, 
a little bit longer uh, subjects, a little bit more in-depth area, either people like this or not. We would love to hear from you guys. You can go to techtimeradio.com, and there's a contact us section on the webpage. Mm -hmm. If you like a segment that we've done so far, if you didn't like the letter segment, if you did, you can absolutely provide us some feedback. We're going to be changing this around for the first couple weeks here until we kind of get into a groove that we feel really is appropriate for what we have taken care of. We absolutely want to open it. I know that we didn't have anybody calling the lines today, but hopefully we get some people calling on in so we can have some interaction one-on-one -on, -one on the line. I didn't see uh, any tweets, but I did see our Twitch feed was going really well. So we appreciate all the feedback that we got on our twitch.tv forward slash tech time radio. Um, and we are going to be, Ending with a trivia fact of the day. I think we got about we have about two more minutes, David. Is that right? All right. So here we, we go. Got, we got a whole bunch of time left in Radio Land. We do. I got tons of time in Radio Land. So I was, I was sure. worried about this. All right. So here we go. <laughs> is this? So I'm going to ask you both. We got the whiskey to finish. Too. Is this true or false? The most popular sport in film is boxing. True. True. True or false, David? Uh, it's got to be false. Oh, you are right, Mr. Gorday. The most popular sports in films is boxing. I've, I've obviously I've been watching Bull Durham too much. Then. You've been watching Bull Durham too much. Rocky, you're... baby. It's all about Rocky. Now, if you want to watch a really good boxing film or movie, I would recommend you guys watching Digstown. You ever seen Digstown? No. Digstown. You need to, everybody needs to mark it right here on their calendar. D-I-G-S town. It's got James Wood in it. It's about a guy that gets out of prison that comes back and he's a con artist with boxing. I need, it, to, I need to go back into fighting. You, you need to go, are you going to go back into fighting? Uh, yeah. You go back into your karate? That's right. You're going to go karate kid? Gonna, yeah. Uh, you gonna, you, have you watched any of those new karate kid shows? Yeah. Uh, that's, they're, they're, that's they're, all right. They're pretty, they're pretty okay. They're okay. Yeah. It's, it's okay for a kid's show. Well, I am Nathan Mum. We're excited that you guys are a part of our second hour. We have Microday here. That's Microday, me. and you got is your podcast on hold? I heard a little bit. Is that right? I'm between seasons. Between seasons, seasons. two and three. Okay, so you're going to be going in season three when it comes on back. Yep. We got David Brown who was officiating uh, some games, some baseball today. The baseball over behind softball. the board. Softball. He does softball. Yeah, he does softball. We thank you very much. He's counting down. We will see you next week. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. Thanks for joining us on Tech Time Radio. We hope that you had a chance to have that mmm moment in technology today. The fun doesn't stop there, as we recommend that you go to techtimeradio.com and join our fan list. We also have a few other ways to stay connected, including subscribing to our podcast on any podcast service, from Apple to Google and everything in between. And also signing up on our YouTube page, where you can see us live in person. Yes, you can see us chat and have fun. YouTube.com slash Tech Time Radio, all one word. We hope you enjoyed the show as much as we did making it for you. From all of us at Tech Time Radio, remember, mum's the word. Have a safe and fantastic week.